Hello everyone, this is Upper West Side Kim Chikai at home. We are live today on Facebook with Kids Karate for ages five and up. We're gonna start in about two minutes. Hello B. Thank you for telling me you're here. For other people who are watching from home, like you just saw Kyle do saying that B is here on Facebook. I can't always tell who's watching, so feel free to say your name so I know that you are with us in class today. In the meantime, as always, let's make sure that everyone has a safe space so you can kind of spread your arms, spread your legs. You guys know the drill. If you are joining us today for the first time, this is going to be a kids karate class for ages five and up, but anyone can join in. We're going to do some basic moves, some more advanced moves. There's no requirements other than try to have fun and move your body, get some exercise. So one last time, just make sure that everything around you is safe, that you are not wearing socks if you can help it, if you are able to, that you don't have any furniture nearby that you could bump into or punch or kick. And we'll start in just about one minute. Hello, Avital, or maybe Zach, or maybe Zoe. Someone in Avital's home. All right, so we're gonna get ourselves started. Anyone who jumps in late is welcome to join us. Hi, Ruby, nice to see you, or at least to see your name. So we're gonna start by making our statue. So for the new people at home, what that means is I'm gonna bring my hands out and I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna tilt my camera down so it's a little more of my body and a little less of that screen in my living room. All right, so here we are, we're in our statue. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring our feet together. So you can't see my feet, but I'm bringing them together. I bring my hands together and I'm just gonna close my eyes. And the idea here is I'm not going to sleep, right? I'm not taking a nap but I'm getting my body focused on karate. Just take a deep breath. And now open your eyes and step off to the side. All right, and we're back in that statue and I'll just start shaking it out. So sometimes we come into class from somewhere else. I actually just came into class from walking my dog, so I was outside. And we gotta shift our brain, right? So we were just outside, maybe we were just reading a book, maybe we were watching something, maybe we were in school, doing some schoolwork on our computer. Whatever it is we were just doing, it's hard to kind of shift into karate mode like that, right? We were still thinking about whatever it was we were just doing. So one of the things we often do is we do some like really basic movement that doesn't use much of our brain to kind of shift us into our karate mode. So that's what, kind of what our shadow boxing is for. So we're gonna step back, we're gonna pick up a fighting stance, our hands are gonna come up, and we're just gonna start moving our body around. And obviously Ruby and B, you guys know, we always do the same movement. If you wanna use your imagination, you can imagine that I'm your partner and we're working together. So I'm gonna imagine that you, Ruby just threw a kick and oh, I gotta move out of the way. And now B just threw a punch and I gotta move out of the way. So you can use your imagination, imagine that the punches I'm throwing are things you wanna move away from. Just keep moving your body around. For the people just joining us, feel free to type in like you see that Ruby did, just to let me know that you're here. And I know that you guys are in class at a certain point for Upper West Side Kenshi Guys students. We actually are gonna use this as attendance. The Zoom classes we have been taking attendance, the Facebook classes, it's a little bit harder. But that means if you type in and say that you're here, you will get credit for taking class. So let's do it, keep going. Move it around, switch your feet, move around on that side. Awesome. And now, Nare, come back to standing straight. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna isolate little movements of our body as part of our warm up. So right now, I want you to imagine you're a karate robot. So you're just standing still. And the robot is only programmed to move one arm. So the goal is to keep every part of your body still, except for that one arm. And now you can move it in a little bit of a circle. Obviously, when we make a circle, you'll notice that parts of my, the rest of my body have to move. I can't circle my arm without moving my shoulder. 
I can't circle my arm without moving my belly. But what we don't want is to be moving everything. So put that arm down, move the other arm up and down, and maybe in a big circle. Okay, you're gonna do the same with your legs. So you're gonna lock your arms. You're gonna try to just move one leg. You can't really see one, but if you see the top of it, it's just shaking. And now try to move the other leg. Bring your hands to your waist, and now we're just gonna try to move our head, not our whole body, but just our head, say yes. Good, just your head, say no. And now just your head in a circle. Obviously, we can't move our head without moving our shoulders a little bit, but we really wanna try to isolate that motion. Awesome, and now just shake out everything. You can open and close your hands a little bit. For the newer people, I'll just real quick show. Whenever we're making our fists, we want to roll our fingers and we want to put our thumb on the outside. Obviously, regular students, you know that already. So, we're going to step into our Sanchandachi stance. That's the one where we step out like this. We're going to bring both of our hands out. We're going to pull one hand into our chamber. So now, what I want you guys to do is focus on a couple of details today. So each thing we do, I'm going to give you three or maybe two details. So the details for this, you guys already know, but let's just remember, we of course want our fist tight, but we also want our wrist straight, and we want to be pointing these two knuckles. So that actually requires that we turn our hand a little bit. So, so we don't want to be flat like this. We actually want to turn just a little bit. So if you see what I did, this is me punching at you. This is me turning. I know it's really tiny, but that turn is pointing this big knuckle right at you, right? This is the, these are the strongest two. So if I do this, I'm pointing my whole flat fist at you. If I do this, I'm pointing those first two knuckles at you. So that's gonna be our detail to remember for all of our up, middle, and down punches. The other detail I want you to remember is that your chamber is all the way back. So we're punching middle. Itch, knee, sun, chi, go, look, sitch, hotch, ku, ju. And now we're gonna bring our hand up, and now we're punching in front of our face. Same details, do a little turn of your wrist, so your two knuckles. When you're looking, you can see them, like there's two little mountains there. So I can look between those knuckles to see the camera. And my other hand is back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On 10, we can always key eye. So if you like to key eye, and key eye from your house, it's fine. Bring your hand down toward the floor, punching down. Itch, knee, sun, chi, go, rook, sitch, hotch, ku, ju, key eye. So now we're gonna do our up, middle, down, like we always do. And what I really want you to focus on today is there's a straight line going down the center. So your body naturally punches here and here. Why? Because that's where my shoulder is. So if I just punch without thinking, I'm actually gonna be hitting two separate spots. You guys notice I'm hitting two separate spots. In order to not do that, I need to bring my fist to the center of my body. It's not straight off my shoulder anymore. It's off on a little angle, right? It's like doing this. So when you do your up, middle, down, I want you to hit three center spots, not three spots that one is on this side, one is on this side, and one is on this side but three spots that are down the middle. So if I had something long and skinny, you could hit that thing in three different spots. So we're doing our up, middle, down, right down the center. Itch, knee, up, middle, down. Sun, chi, go, look, sitch, hotch, ku, Two. Very good, Nare, shake it out. Okay, so we're gonna step back into our fighting stance now. So we're back in our fighting stance. Both hands are up by our head. So we're gonna do our one, two punch. We're gonna jump right to it. And I want you to focus on a couple of things with this too. Number one, really focus on this hand, the front hand, which is our jabbing hand, being super fast. So I want it to go out and back to your head as fast as you can. This hand, which is our cross, our back hand, that's the one with the power, and notice what happens to my belly when I throw it. So here's my jab. Notice my belly didn't really move. Here's my cross. You see my belt come all the way around. You see my belly come all the way out. 
you can't really see my legs, but when I do that, I'm also leaning more weight onto my front leg. I'll make it really dramatic so you can see. See that? That's the, my lean. Now I'm doing it super dramatic. You don't have to do that. But the idea is fast, lean with some power. Fast, lean it. One, twist. When this hand punches, this hand protects our face. When this hand punches, this hand protects our face. So what we want to do, even though these are really easy basic moves, especially for Ruby and for B, we want to focus on getting all of that right. So if we do it kind of mindlessly, this happens, right? Uh, I'm punching. Oh, I don't know where this hand went. I don't know. I'm moving around. So if we focus, we can really get those details exactly where we want them. So fighting stance, jab cross, one, two, itch, knee, sun. So I'm going to go a little bit slower to really show off those details. You guys go as fast as you want, but don't lose it. Go. Whoop. One, two. Sitch. Hatch. Coop. And ju. Kiai. Switch those feet. So when you switch your feet, you switch your hands. So now I have a new hand here and a new hand here, right? Same thing. Pull, punch and pull back. Lean in and twist. Punch and pull back. Lean in and twist. One, two. Itch. Again, you guys can go as fast as you want, but keep those hands up. Keep that twisting detail. Me, I'm going to go at a little slower pace just to really show what we're working on right now. Sun. Cheat. Go. Look. Sitch. Hatch. Coop. And ki eye on that cross. Ju. Ki eye. All right, nare, come back, shake it out again. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. <sighs> shake it out. All right, so now we're gonna step to the side in our horseback riding stance. So if I go way, way, way back here, you can almost see when I'm, I'm out, right? And my knees are bent. And I'm not super low, but I'm also not super high. I'm kind of halfway, so like it's like, if I were doing a little squat, not a super low squat, but like a baby squat. So I'm going to open my feet. And here's the rule. And you guys who take class with me at the dojo, you remember this rule. I want to keep my feet open. So my feet are like out here. This is where my feet are. You can't see them, but imagine these are my feet. And I want to bend my knees. This gets tiring, right? My legs are going to get tired. The rule is, if your legs get tired, you can straighten them for a second. And then you want to bend them again. Don't straighten them and then start wiggling around and then, oh, I forgot, I gotta go back into my stance, right? So, kibadachi, horseback riding stance. We're gonna take this hand, which is, with, for you guys should be your left. You're gonna see it as my left. Bring it to our ear. So if, you, if I come up close, my hand is like this, and look, it's gonna bring my elbow up to the sky. My other hand's gonna be in my chamber, and I'm in my horseback riding stance. I'm just gonna switch. And what are we focusing on now? So today our theme is details, right? I want you to focus on what the not elbow hand is doing. So this hand's gonna come up. This hand, if you don't pay attention, it might start to creep down here. It might start to get a little lazy. So we wanna really keep it in that chamber. Itch, knee, sun, chi, pull it back. Go, look, sitch, hatch, Ku, ju. So the, we're going to do 10 more. The other thing we want to focus on right now is that we're bringing our elbow straight up across our body instead of a punch that turns into an elbow. So this is the motion. Notice my fist was hiding most of the time. Of course, when we get to here, you see it a little bit, but we're not doing that. Boom. Totally, literally different motion, right? Not an uppercut where we then hit our ear, but an elbow up our side. So let's do 10 more, work on that itch. You can ki eye if you want. Knee, sun, chi, go, look, sitch, hatch, ku, ju. Very nice, so take that same elbow, bring it across your body. So now notice when I was elbowing up, this was the part that would be hitting, right? So imagine if there was a pad right here. That's the part that's hitting the pad. 
Now it's this part. So it, we call it an elbow, but really it's the elbow and the forearm, right? So it's boom. So if I were hitting you guys, right? Here I come, ah, right at your head. So here we go, right? This is our elbow. This is our chamber, and we're gonna twist our belly. Itch, boom. If your foot comes a little bit off the floor or does this a little bit, that's okay. Neat. Just don't go so crazy with it that you end up turning over. Sun, chi, go. Again, tuck that fist in. No punch and elbow. Rook, sitch, hotch, ku, ju. Ten more with kiai if you want. Again, the reason I say if you want is because I'm not sure where you guys are, right? So, so you might be in your house, you might be in your backyard, you might be somewhere where there's a baby sleeping. So you, if you of course should kiai if you can, but obviously I can't hear you, so I don't know. And itch, me, big swing, sun, chi, go, rook, sitch, hutch, ku, ju. Very nice. So now I'm going to take my elbow and I'm going to stick it out to the side and I'm going to put this hand on top. So again, if I come close, the elbowing arm, here's the elbow, right? The hand that's pushing. So there's a fist on the elbowing arm. The hand that's pushing is open and I'm pushing my elbow to the side. So that's kind of like my helper, right? So here I am. I'm going to go side, other side. And notice my legs, are, I'm still in my horseback riding stance but it is okay to lean a little bit. So this is about the amount of lean, right? Itch, boom. Knee, sun, chi, go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, ju. Notice it's a little motion. It's not really big and dramatic, right? So again, with kiai, itch, kiai that way. Knee, sun, switch, switch, chi, Switch, switch, go. Take your time and get that right. Rook, sitch, hatch, ku, ju. All right, shake it out for a second. So we're gonna do a combination. So for people at home who are newer, just follow along the best you can. It's, it's not super hard. It's gonna be a pretty easy combination, but if you've never done a combination before, it's easy to get really confused. The advice for all combinations, and Ruby and B, you guys can hear this too, is that do one move at a time first in your brain, right? So even if the combination has 10 things, it turns out we can't do 10 things all at once. We have to do one thing, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. So if you try to think about 10 things all at once, you're gonna jumble them all up and get confused. So the goal is to think about one thing, and then the next thing, and then the next thing, and then as you start to memorize it and get it, then you can string them one right after the other. So our combination is gonna be pretty easy. We're gonna do one elbow up, Elbow across, elbow up again. So it's three elbows, up, across, up. Then when we start on the other side, it's up, across, up. Ready, itch, one, two, three. What do I want you to focus on now? Really making these different moves. So it can be easy to just do kind of a half, 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 right? Where it's halfway across, halfway up. Mm -mm. Straight up, all the way across, straight up. So again, you can be even a little bit dramatic about it and be like, look, I'm going up. Look how across I am. That's okay. We want to focus on those details. So we're going up, across, up. Itch. Again, I'm going to always go at a medium speed so I can show the details. You guys can go as fast as you want so long as you're not being sloppy. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go, look, sitch, up, around, up, hatch, up, around, up, coop, and ju. Very good. Nare, come out of that kibadachi. Shake out your legs. All right, so we're going to move on to some kicks. But today we're going to start out our kicks and then we'll let you guys have some fun with making your own choices. But right now we're going to start out, we're just going to do roundhouse kick. We're going to do it off our front leg and our back leg. And again, we're going to focus on these little tiny details that make our kick better. In order to focus on those details, we're going to go a little bit slower. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do right now, if you can, is find something 
that you can put your hand on. So it can be a chair. I'm going to use this closet over here. So just take a moment. Your mom and dad at home can help you to adjust your camera. So you can put your hand on something. So I'm again, I'm going to put my hand on this closet over here. It would be fine to rest your hand on a chair. You can use your couch. Anything that you can put your hand on because what we're going to do is we're going to isolate some of these details in a super slow way to start. And then we'll come off of our wall. And we've done this before, but today instead of focusing on holding it up and getting our legs stronger, we're going to really focus on those details. So put one leg in front. Doesn't matter which one. And now bring this hand up and turn your body so you're in that roundhouse kick position. So what do I mean if I'm facing you? This is the position. So I'm gonna be able to bring my chamber up that way. So notice I'm facing you guys sideways. Your back hand is resting on whatever you're holding on to. So if it's a chair, you could be down here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna point our toes. So again, this is the position of my foot. If you see, I'll try to show you this way. My toes are pointing down like a ballet foot, right? Like I'm doing dance. And I'm gonna bring my knee up and I'm gonna bring my foot out to snap and then back and down. So we're not gonna hold it, but we are gonna, you can lean on the wall as much as you need to, or your chair or your couch, just to get, so the angle, the point, the snap, and then down. And again, up, snap, down. Up, snap, down. Up, snap, down. Switch your feet. If you need to switch so you're away from the camera like I'm turning my back on you, that's okay. You guys get the idea. One, snap, down. Two, three, four, five. All right, we got the idea. You can come away from your wall now or your chair. So. We're gonna do front leg roundhouse by ourselves now in the air, and then we will focus on back leg roundhouse. So pick up your fighting stance again with your left leg in front, and we're just gonna kick off our front leg 10 times. So you wanna lean your weight back, remember that sideways position, remember that pointed foot, remember that sideways chamber and itch. Again, I'm gonna be going at a medium speed. You can snap that foot as fast and as strong as you want. Knee, sun. She, go, rook, sitch, hatch, coo, ju, switch your feet, same kick, other side, itch, knee, sun, she, go, rook, sitch, hatch, coo, do. All right, shake it out for a second. So, back leg roundhouse kick. The most important thing, well, there's a couple, but I'm going to give you two. Two of the most important things. Number one, your base foot. Base foot is the leg you're standing on, right? The one that's not kicking. Every time you kick, we talked about this before, you're going to do this motion. You're going to do a little pivot. Same chamber, same pointed foot. You want your belly to go from this side. To that side. So right now, without the kick, it's my base leg, right? It doesn't matter which one. Pick one. This is going to be, if, if I'm, this is my right, so you guys can pick your right too. And all I want you to do, forget the kick, I just want you to turn and come back. So what you should feel is you're on the ball of your foot and you're doing this on your foot. Boom, and back. I just want you to feel that turning motion. Don't throw the kick yet. Just turn and come back and turn and come back. Switch your feet. Go the other way. So you're turning. If you kept going, you would spin all the way in a circle, right? Don't do that. But the idea is you're letting that foot move. You're turning and coming back. We're doing a little dance. All right. So come back with your left leg in front. So now add the whole kick, the roundhouse kick. Don't forget to turn. So sometimes we get stuck and we end up doing this kind of swing that I'm doing with my leg. Don't do that. Bend, chamber, turn. Ready, itch. I'm only gonna do five because this one takes a little more muscle and energy. Knee, around, and back to the floor. Sun, chi, 
go. Switch your feet. Itch, turn, come back. Knee takes actually a little more muscle to do with slut. Sun, boom, chi. One more, go. Good, shake it out. So now, I want you to pick whatever kick you felt like working on today. So, those of you who were in my Zoom class yesterday, which actually I think was Ruby and B, but anyone else who's watching at home, I'm not sure who else is there, but maybe some of you were also in my Zoom class yesterday. If not, basically what happened yesterday was we talked a little bit about this idea of independent practice, right? Practice where you're not doing it for your mom or your teacher or you know someone else at all. You're doing it for you. This class is a great example because unlike my Zoom classes, I can't see you guys at all. So this whole class is for you. You could be spending this whole class eating a pizza, staring at the screen, and I would never know. Don't do that, by the way. It's not a good idea. But the idea is I want you to pick a kick right now that is the kick you want to work on. If you want to type it in and tell me what kick you're doing, you can, but you don't have to because, again, it's not for me. It's for you. You can pick knee kick, you can pick side kick, you can pick spin kick, you can pick hook kick, you can do roundhouse kick again, you can do front snap kick. We have so many kicks that we know. If you are new to karate and you're not sure what to do, I want you to work on this kick. This is our front snap kick, right? Awesome, so what do we got here? Ah, Kalel, welcome, nice to see you. Kalel, I hope that you're picking a good kick. I know you like spin kicks, so I'm guessing you're picking something like that. So, we're here. If you don't know, again, if you're new to karate and you don't know a lot of kicks, this is a front snap kick. That's the kick I want you to work on. Everyone else, pick whatever you want and go. So I'm just gonna hang out here and visualize you guys kicking around your houses. Those of you who are in my Zoom classes, I kinda know a little bit what your houses look like now. Some of you, I know you sometimes do your class in your garage, I think Kalal, you might. So just keep on working on those kicks. Awesome, B's working on hook kick. And just keep working on whatever kick you want. Oh, good. Kalel's working on roundhouse kick. So the idea is you get to know your own body, right? So you know, like I know that this is a bad front snap kick. And I know that that's a good one, right? You can feel in your own body. So even though I can't see you right now, you can see and feel you. And you know when a kick feels strong. You know when a kick feels sloppy. You'll get to understand your own body. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. Keep practicing karate. Karate is a great way for us to get to know our own body. Awesome, Ruby's doing spin kick. Don't get too dizzy. So just take one more minute, work on these kicks. Whatever one you picked, if you get tired of doing one of them, you can pick a second one. But the idea is at the end of this little break, or not break for you, but break for me kicking, you should be better at that kick you picked. How is it better? Well, I don't know. That's kind of up, depends on what you were working on. Maybe it's higher, maybe it's stronger, maybe the form is better. So everyone right now at home do five more kicks. Five more of your kick. When you're done with your five, if you wanna get a water break, you can. Again, I can't see you today, so you could have been drinking water this whole time, but. You guys know how I feel about that. So hopefully you weren't, but right now, if you need to grab a, a little bit of water, go right ahead and then come on back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our Sanban Kumite a little bit quicker today, a little bit faster and a little bit different. And you'll see what I mean when you come back. Okay, good. So everyone hopefully is back with us now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move myself back. So I'm gonna move my camera. Then I'm gonna give myself a lot of space. So first, let's do it all together. So we're gonna go through number one. So right leg step back, zen kusuraji, gay number I, kamate. So step forward, punch stomach, itch. Again, knee, and face punch sun. We're gonna go fast, because I think everyone who said that they're here knows it. Again, if you're brand new and you didn't tell me your name, just try to follow along the best you can. Everyone else, you guys know it. So stepping back, outside block one, outside block two, upper block three, open, Pull, punch, back leg round. So let's do it one more time. Stepping forward, itch, knee, face punch, sun. Stepping back, itch, knee, sun, open, pull, punch, kick. 
Okay, so now, what I want you guys to do, so everyone put your right leg in front. So if we were together, we would have our toes facing each other. So I have my left, you have your right. So now I'm gonna be the offense and you guys are gonna be the defense. So I'm gonna step in and punch and you guys are gonna step back and block. And I know I can't see you, so we're gonna use our imagination here. So here I come, I'm stepping in and punching. You step back and block, one. Step back and outside block, two. Step back and upper block, three. You pull my arm, you punch, you roundhouse kick me. All right, so now you're gonna step in and punch stomach. Itch, I'm gonna block your belly. Knee, step in and punch face on me. Son, boom, pull, I pull. I punch at you, I roundhouse kick. Everyone come back to Kamate and now switch so you have your left leg in front again. So we're back to starting. Now we're all doing it together. So not offense, defense like we just did. Everyone is doing the same thing. So all of us step in punch face. We're doing number two. All of us step in punch stomach. All of us back leg front snap kick. So we're all good in RA. And now we're gonna find our left leg and our right hand, <laughs> sorry, left leg, right hand. Step back, upper block, go. Oops, see I had to switch because I'm backwards on you. So this is actually my right leg and my left hand. But you guys should be doing your left leg and your right hand. Step back, inside block, go. Step back, open hand, show tape block. Close your fist, back fist, and elbow. Step all the way back to Kamate. So you should have your left leg in front, Step forward, face. Step forward, stomach. Back leg, front snap. Nare, let's try this again. Left leg, right hand, itch. <laughs> Knee, boom. Sun, push, strike, kiai. Okay, so one more time. You guys, nare now, standing straight. So you're gonna step back with your left leg and your right hand is gonna block up. I'm the offense, I'm coming at you. Step back and upper block. Step back and inside block. Step back and push my kick down. Good, so I'm gonna nare, you kamate. So you should have your left leg in front. You're gonna step in face punch on me. Ready, itch, boom. Step in stomach punch on me, knee. Front snap kick on me, son. So I'm pushing your kick. I'm striking. I'm doing that elbow. Everyone, all right, come back, shake it out. So we're not gonna do number three right now, but you guys know there is a number three. <laughs> it's the one with this at the end. So we're not gonna do it right now. Right now, shake it out. We're gonna come back and do some katas. So we right now, if there's anyone in the room who is new or a white belt, well, the katas we're gonna do are gonna be a little bit above your level because the people that I can see that are in the room are all blue belts and yellow belts. So if you are at home and you, I can't see that you're here, you didn't tell me that you're here, just follow along the best you can for fun. These are a little bit more advanced, these moves. And for people, as you guys know, I always say, doing kata like this is a little bit hard. We're gonna hopefully do katas that you guys all know. So we're gonna start, Yoy. we're all gonna do Kenshi Kai kata number one. The blue belt kata with the upper block. Ready, itch. Step in and punch knee. Upper block behind you, sun. Step in and punch, chi. Block down, go. Step in, double punch down, rook. Double punch middle, sitch. Double punch face, hotch, kiai. Step back, inside block, ku. Outside block, ju. Lower block, itch. So we're going to the side. I know I'm going fast, but that's because I know you guys know. Turning, upper block, reverse punch. Step in, up, middle, go. Turn, upper block, reverse punch. Step in, up, middle, kia. All right, so here's the challenge now. We're gonna do it again, but not me, just you. So the same kata we just did. Again, it's a blue belt kata. So Ruby and Kalel, I know you know it. And uh, uh, B, I know you know it too. So we're gonna turn and you guys are gonna upper block and you're gonna go. So I'm gonna count for you. 
Yoy, I'm going to remind you of the moves, but you don't have to look at me because I'm not going to do it. Turn upper block and no reverse punch, just upper block that way. Itch. Step in and punch. Knee. So this is just like when we're in class and I'm just there counting. So you don't have to look at the camera at all. You can just hear my voice. Turn all the way around. Sun. So your upper block can go in the other way. Step in and punch. Chi. Blocking down toward the camera. Go. Double punch down. Rook. Double punch middle. Sitch. Double punch face. Hatch. Step back inside block. Ku. Step back. Outside block, ju. Step back, lower block, itch. So now you're turning back that way, upper block, reverse punch, knee. Step in, up, middle, sun. Turn this way, upper block, reverse punch, chi. Step in, up, middle, and kiai, go. Nare, come back. So hopefully you got that pretty well. So we are gonna move on we're gonna do Pinan too, and B, I know you you know all your blue belt katas, so follow along. You actually probably know part of this one by now anyway. Um, and obviously Ruby and Kalal, you know, but we could always do a little bit of work on some of those details. So some of the parts of this kata, you're gonna see me slow it down. Again, anyone at home who's new to karate, this is just a really, really hard kata. So have fun following along. Just move your body but everyone else let's try to get these details right so we're gonna yoy so we're gonna start here right boom stack boom right so i'm doing this move and this move together my top hand swings down slide your front leg forward kibarachi side punch so i'm in my horseback riding stance so now i'm gonna go the other way i'm gonna make my chamber here i'm gonna stack this hand on top and i'm gonna go swing so now I'm going to take this leg that's out and this hand that's out. And I'm going to bring them all together. Notice I got sideways. So I'm kicking away from the camera. Side kick and back fist. Shuto mawashi uke. I'm coming forward again. Shuto mawashi uke. I'm coming forward again. Shuto mawashi uke. Push down. Step. Step. Don't forget to step and step. So now back leg is turning. Shuto Mawashi UK. For B, it's like the end of the advanced blue belt kata. B on one. Go. B's like, I'm not an advanced blue belt yet, but I know you're doing the kata. Turn. Go. All of these nice things. Go. All right. So don't move. I'm going to show this move toward you, even though we have to go away from the camera now. But what you're going to do is you're going to step away from me. I'm going to bring your hand up, down. Block. So I'm going to go away from you, so I wanted you to see it. So go up, down, block. Front snap kick, go. Reverse punch. Slow block. So what your head is doing is this. Front snap kick, reverse punch. Step in, double block. So this block, boom, right? Back leg is turning, lower block down. So we're here. The hand that's out, pull it to your chamber. Stab off on an angle, step, upper block. Front leg turn behind, go. Pull, stab, step, upper block. Nare, come back. Very nice. So the katas, we can always work on them more in our Zoom classes where, you know, we split us into little groups and I can see you and I can make corrections and things like that. So right now, everyone come down on the floor. And again, this is one of those times, again, if you were in my class yesterday, which all of you were, I think, remember this is the point where I told you to not bring your camera down on the floor because I don't want to see you. I can't see you right now, so you can do whatever you want. Just make sure you can see me. So what are we going to focus on today? Details of push-ups. So all of you at home who are like, what? <laughs> so we're going down on the floor. And what do I want you to focus on now? The most important thing is your elbows. So here I am, I'm doing my push-up. Imagine my body's moving. Look at my elbows are going out to the side, right? Sometimes when my little, little kids, and you guys aren't so little, so you can't do this, they, they, when they do push-ups, their arms actually stay straight. And they just do what I call a butt-up. Or <laughs> I bring my butt up and down in the air. You guys know better, so remember, Elbows out, your chest should come down, almost touch the floor, 
and then back up, your back is going to be super straight. So what I want you guys to do when I say go is only five push-ups. But your goal, just like with the kicks, is to feel your body and make it the best five push-ups you can, as close to perfect as you can. So I'm gonna go down too, but don't worry about watching me. Do it for you. So your back is straight and go. Five super good push-ups. Go slow. Come back down when you're done. So you should really feel it. Even if you only do five, if you do five slow, your body's gonna feel it. Those muscles in your chest and your back and your shoulders, they're gonna feel it. So now we're gonna turn over on our back and we're gonna do the same thing. We're only gonna do 10 crunches. It's a pretty small number, but I want you guys to do them slow and I want you to focus on your nose going up to the ceiling. So here I am, right? And sometimes we do our crunches and we try to bring our, our head to our knees. Not today. So maybe if I go this way, you guys can see a little better. So today, I want to think about my nose going to the ceiling, not to my knees. So you can even keep your feet on the floor. But we're doing 10 and our head's going up toward the ceiling. Go ahead. Go slow. When you are all done, just lay down on the floor for a second. You can pull your knees into your chest. You can stretch it out. And then come up to your knees, seiza. So here I am. Everyone, muck so, close your eyes. Be still. So our robot that was in the beginning of class that could only move one part of our body, now our robot's off. A robot is shut down, so we can't move any part of our body. We're a sitting in Seiza robot. You can breathe, but breathe normal. Don't make dramatic breaths. And right now, I want you guys to do something kind of funny. Keep your eyes closed, and I want you to listen with your ears. And we all live in New York. So you might hear something. When I say open your eyes, I want you to come type in what you heard. Pick one thing. If you're in a, on a street where there's a lot going on, you might hear a lot of things. If you're in the country, if you're somewhere quiet, maybe you hear a bird chirping. Maybe you hear your mom, maybe you hear a car, maybe you hear a dog barking. If you hear nothing, you can type nothing but specifically focus on what you hear. And by the way, don't say you hear she on Jennifer. Okay, everyone open your eyes. Come on over to your computer. Type in what you heard. I'll tell you guys, I actually did hear a bird chirping once I stopped hearing my own voice talking. So while you guys are typing in what you heard, why do we do that? Because sometimes it's really hard to not hear the words in our own head, right? And sometimes the words in our own head are super cool and super fun. And they're like telling us they're excited about something. Or maybe they're telling us that they're like, oh, I can't, you know, I'm imagining that I'm Superman and I'm running around in the woods. And sometimes the words in our head are not so happy. Maybe they're telling us something hurts or maybe they're telling us that I'm sad or maybe they're telling us something that we don't like. And one way to kind of stop hearing the words in our head is to use our ears to hear a sound instead or to use our eyes to see something. So hopefully, while you guys had your eyes closed, you heard something pretty cool. So Kalal said he heard his sister that's one thing to certainly hear when your eyes are closed and you can only hear. Also, you'll notice when your eyes are closed, you sometimes hear things better because you can't see. So your ears turn on a little bit better. So what do we got? Yep. Oh, that's cool. So Kyle was on a call, B's dad, and also there was a car or a motorcycle outside. That's certainly something I, I hear around here all the time. Awesome. So while B is coming up with what she heard, thank you guys so much for joining us today on Facebook. 
There is another class tomorrow on Zoom with Senpai Christian and Senpai Hannah, so you will see them tomorrow. And then some of you, I know I might see you in the park on Friday. If I don't see you on Zoom or in the park, I hope you guys have a really great rest of your week and awesome work today. I know that you guys worked hard. I don't even need to see you. And I will see you guys soon. Have a really great Wednesday. Take care and bye.